amazing to be here with you all, and thanks for choosing to come here. We've had some fantastic sessions this afternoon. Whilst I get started, I'm going to invite um, my colleagues Judith um, Darukshi and uh, Joe to come up uh, uh, onto the stage if that's okay, because for most of this session, it's not going to be me, I'm sure you'll be glad to hear talking, it's going to be some of our fabulous um, GoGNers. So my name is Beck Pitt, I'm a member of the GoGN team, the Global OER Graduate Network team, and this session really is about looking back and looking forward and member and community reflections as we celebrate our 10th anniversary of the network this year. Whoops. <laughs> So, oops, got a bit of a. Okay, so what we're going to cover is we're going to have a little bit about what GoGN is. I'm sure, I think, hands up in the air if you're already familiar with GoGN and the network. A few hands in the air. For those that are online and perhaps don't know in the room as well, um, we'll very briefly tell you a little bit about what we do and the network a little bit about our fantastic 10th anniversary and the activities that we've been doing um, prior to OE Global. So some of you may be aware that we've had um, our 10th anniversary workshop, so we've been bringing people together, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, then going to kind of talk a little bit about our co-creative publications as well, and then open it up to our fabulous um, GoGNers that are on the stage, and they're going to share some of their reflections and experiences um, of the network. So, what is GoGN? So, GoGN stands for Global OER Graduate Network, and the aim of the network is to raise the profile of research into open education, and more specifically, our focus is on doctoral, um, doctoral students and offer support and enable uh, those researchers um, and support them in their doctoral research journeys. We also have a strong focus on equity, diversity, and inclusion that my colleague Karina um, and it leads on as part of our work. And we're also um, very much kind of focused on developing openness as a practice, a process of research, sorry, um, and open research practices and encouraging and supporting those um, within the network. As I mentioned, I'm a member of the GoGN team, which we should see some pictures of here in a moment. Okay, um, so you can see we've got the team in the room as well. So we've got Martin and Rob down here and Karina there over at the back as well and Kylie, of course, there as well. So the full team in the house. So um, please go and talk to, um, talk to everyone as well as me if you've got any questions um, about us uh, going forward. The network currently has around 100, almost 170 members. So um, GoGN came to um, the Open University where um, myself and colleagues are based um, a few years ago and since then we've been um, we've increased the number of um, members and also alumni in the network as people have kind of gone through their doctoral um, journey and completed uh, completed their studies um, so we've had a 221 percent increase in members and alumni since 2016 and around just under a third of our membership is based in the global south we do lots of different things. I'm going to talk a little bit about our face-to-face -face, um, workshop that we've had um, a couple of days ago in a moment. But here's some fantastic pictures of other wonderful things that we've been doing over the past few years, including at the last OE Global um, in, uh, in Nantes on the right bottom right-hand side. There's a picture of, um, picture of everybody there, as well as in our London event at the OER conference um, prior to that. So we hold kind of events and um, workshops um, fairly regularly, once or twice a year, to kind of bring our doctoral researchers from around the world together, to kind of share research and experiences, to kind of work together um, and spend time face-to-face uh, -face and participate in conferences like this. And we've got a lot of our um, GoGN members speaking at OE Global um, throughout the next couple of days. So. Um, please uh, do go and uh, find out more about the fantastic work that everybody is doing. As I mentioned, um, GoGN is 10 this year, so we're celebrating um, a decade of GoGN. Um, we held a special workshop recently um, where we brought um, around about 30 um, people from around the world from 13 different countries and five continents together here in Edmonton, working over two days um, to kind of share ideas, talk more about our research, and then also work on some co-creation activities as well. 
You can find out a little bit about what folks have been doing um, on our hashtag uh, for the workshop here, and also some lovely pictures, there we go, um, of, um, of the activities uh, that people have been involved in. So we did spend um, the second day of our workshop working together on um, co-creating one of our forthcoming publications, which builds on the suite of resources that we've got available so far. So please do go and check these out. If you're not already familiar with some of the outputs here, we've got our research methods handbook, um, our conceptual framework handbook. We've been doing annual reviews of research, uh, and we also have our EDI guidelines as well. I know Karina and Paco are presenting this morning about some of that work, and we'll be presenting again um, later on in the conference. So you can see some pictures of people in a second. Oops. Um, uh, just there from the workshop. Apologies for the slightly temperamental slides. Wonderful. So enough from me. Um, I'm going to now pass over to some of our fabulous Gojenas to talk a little bit more and tell you a bit, little bit more about um, the network and how um, their experiences of GoGN and how they, as we kind of look forward, um, obviously the focus of um, the presentation is also looking forward as well as looking back, to tell us a little bit more about how they also might see the future of GoGN as we kind of move um, into um, our 11th uh, year. So I'm going to first of all hand over um, to Joe uh, to tell us a little bit more. Thanks, Joe. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Johanna Funk, and I come from Vancouver, but I work in Northern Australia, where that beautiful mangrove um, flicking back and forth is from. <laughs> um, so very, very, just very briefly, um, my PhD was a work-based, project-based PhD, so I didn't take any coursework. Um, I was employed as a research assistant and I wrote up my PhD and, and um, did my analysis based on the work I was doing. So the technical support that I got from the network in terms of the fellowship that I uh, was, was given as well, Paco gave me some amazing skill development that I didn't get during the course of my PhD. So we all get familiar with certain methodologies and theory, theoretical and conceptual frameworks. and. Um, I, I gained a lot of skill support just in the the one-to-one the -one support that I got from the team. Um, socially um, and community um, it's been um, an absolute uh, life-affirming and godsend to have such a wonderful supportive network and to keep growing it. Every time we all get together, my mate Nick says it's like seeing a bunch of puppies playing in a, in a room together because we're all so happy to be learning together and from each other. Um, so socially, that's, that's kind of something we don't always get at our home institutions. Um, and just to be in a room too, to, to be recognized and to have that recognitive experience of people seeing what you're doing as valuable. Um, again, uh, this is sometimes our work is seen as subversive and disruptive. Um, so it's really, really nice to have that recognition uh, for doing um, work in a good way. Um, I see I see more in the future of bringing people along that's happening in the present too. Every person we've talked to at this uh, conference and during our time here um, we've mentioned the, the network and, and we just seem to be keep gathering more people and <laughs> bringing them along with us and that's something I've always learned from some of my best teachers uh, including the people in this team is that they hold no hoarding of power. It's, it's all bring everyone along with you. Um, we can apply some of this to more than just education. I know that Rob's been doing that in the business sector as well, but there are a lot of ways that we can apply open practices to different research um, sectors and, um, and applications and working with different, um, different sectors other than education. So really good policy work that can be done. Um, and yeah, that would lead to more capacity building across the sectors and um, it just kind of keeps rolling on, um, like the tides, up and down, breeding lots of lovely 
dragonflies and um, yeah it's just that's in Rapid Creek where I live in Darwin so I thought it might be appropriate to share that image. Thank you. Oh thanks so much Joe. I'm going to hand over now to Durukshi. <laughs> Okay, okay, I just made a informal slide because I really wanted to share my real experience. Um, how many of you know where Sri Lanka? Not my Gujian crowd, but the rest. <laughs> okay, because I come from Sri Lanka and uh, when I was doing my PhD in 2015 to 2020, I was like a remote, isolated person that never, you know, never got into the world. Uh, I, I come from a computer science background and none of my people in the department speak about the language of ed tech or educational technology, open education. They were all about technology. So um, I had to have this support from uh, somebody where I went to the Y world and then found Go this network called Gojian. And I'm really grateful for that because how Gojian has helped me, actually uh, being with that crew actually uh, helped me to learn up different methodologies, how you can do a tech research, open education research, because I started my uh, PhD research on massive open online education. So I come from a data science background, but how do we bring lively experience to the technology is something that I didn't know what methodologies to use. So Gojian, uh, I have to mention Chrissy, Chrissy just went, because her, when we interact within um, our Gojian workshops, there were really great methodologies discussed in the workshops, such as phenomena, phenomenology, <laughs> it's really difficult. So some things like, you know, ethnography, uh, grounded theory. I remember Jenny Hyman was kind of bringing how, you know, ethnographic perspectives can be uh, articulated based on observations and taking notes and stuff like that. So, and then, um, and also, I remember one of the workshops, I got direct in, um, input from Martin, which is like, uh, uh, I think that was the time that I was about to defend my thesis, so I didn't know what kind of you know questions and what kind of position that I will be in um, a situation. So the support and the confidence that I got as a feedback, I actually did a small, uh, session with them so that I could get many feedback before I get put into myself into the stage in Sri Lanka. So I think those are experience that I could not get from any other networks, which is fantastic. And um, after this, and I'm really proud that there's another uh, colleague of mine who's joined, uh, already joined Anuradha. Uh, you know, she's also doing the same thing. So I'm pretty happy that we are populating uh, the support who really needs this network coming from far away, you know, oceans and oceans. So thank you very much for Goji and, and I really, really encourage if you are in this network, there's many, not just the knowledge, but also the connections and then the, uh, you know, it's like a family for me now. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Dorukshi. And I'd like to hand over now to Judith um, as well to share her. Thanks, Judith. Uh, thank you very much, Beck. And uh, hi, everyone. My name is Judith. I'm from Kenya. I work for Tangaza University College as a senior lecturer and also a coordinator program on service learning. Uh, well, my story for Gojian ideally is one of the stories I love telling. And even if I am called in the middle of the night, tell us about Gojian, I will narrate the story without hesitance. Uh, this journey has been one of its own kind, a beautiful journey, 
that uh, you know pulls you off. And I say GoGN ideally is a great path to PhD completion and of course personal growth for all because we are all here. It doesn't matter where you come from, what you do, and so long as your research is on the open, please, GoGN is the place for you if you want to complete your PhD. Now, how did GoGN support my research? In a number of ways, and most of them my colleagues have mentioned here, but I will be very specific uh, as someone who comes from the global south, where ideally, uh, even thinking a thought of a PhD could just be a dream that will never come true. But when I landed on the GoGN, access to diverted experts, those who really understand how PhD works and PhD in the open works. Such researches really help so much. So I got exposed to a wide range of experts and researchers and scholars from different backgrounds and disciplines who ideally built up, first of all, my self-esteem on a global research and two, uh, doing a research in the global which is quite important for some of us. So the diverse pro uh, uh, the, that diversity provided a fresh perspectives and insights to what I was writing. And in this area, I would say I was the, be the most beneficiary when it comes to issues of te uh, technical uh, support, social support, and all around that I needed. Now the exposure, which is basically international, was quite uh, helpful. I gained a lot of exposure when it comes to uh, my work during the PhD study. And uh, f this was very helpful my, for my research, especially in coming with the, to, to the, uh, with the focus of my research, what I wanted to achieve with it, which therefore has also given me an opportunity to interact with so many people, providing and mentioned opportunities for me. And uh, most of them I'm very happy to have come across. and. Uh, I'll be able now to give very good uh, presentations in international conferences, talks in various universities with a lot of confidence, and more importantly, publish in most prestigious journals and access to wider audience of people who are doing research in the open. All of these are not only meant for my academic development, but also personal growth. Yeah, well, mentorship and guidance is really something that you will never miss in Goji. That's why I always say, please, if you want to complete your PhD, join GoGN. If you want to have a journey which is full of fun with pen penguins, join GoGN. If you really have a, a future for uh, research in the open, GoGN is home. So I got um, a, a network that is connecting me with experienced researchers who provide mentorship and guidance at any stage. You may be facing certain challenges, you see valleys and you see dark corners, but then GoGN gives you that support. From all corners, how are you doing during COVID? All the time email is sent, how are you doing? Tell us a story, what is happening? Where do you find such kind of a network? It is only in GoGN, I guess, please. GoGN really gave me advice on research strategies, career development, and navigating that academic landscape that has made me who I am today. So it's a home for me that I will never forget. And something also that I really realize happens in, uh, uh, in GoGN, once a GoGN member, forever you are, even after you graduate. Now, access to data and field work is amazing. You have a lot. Facilitation of access to local resources, contacts of relevant people who can support you when you really need it, and indeed assistance in navigating local customs and uh, regulations. Very, very crucial. This is the network. Access to funding, to move from place to place, to go and uh, express yourself, present your sections of, the, uh, of your PhD, and indeed ensure that you publish some of them as articles that will also build your profile. I'm known out there, you are able to read from me, see what I do because of GoGN network. So it's, it's a beautiful network, friends come in. Career opportunities also is quite um, enhanced. Now, the future of GoGN, this is where I think all of us are. Yes, I would say that there's a lot of rationale for this network. And ideally, it holds a great promise, especially by the fact that we have the ongoing advancement in technology, shifts in academic landscape, and the increasing connectedness of the world. And I would urge those from the global south, those who come from my, my continent, to consider a network like GoGN. This is home for completion. It is a home that will guide you towards starting and finishing your PhD where 
all the dark corners are worked on and surfaces and gives you that opportunity to build friends who matter, friends who build you and friends who ensure that you smile all the time. And that is home for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judith, and thank you to everyone, Joe, Judith, and Dorochi for sharing. It's um, really, really um, appreciated, and I think gives you a, a much better sense of the impact of the network and what we're about than, than I, I could explain, and other people in the room as well. I'm aware there's a number of other GoGN members uh, in, in the room as well. So, yeah, please do um, uh, chat, to, chat to those folks as well. So you might be thinking, how can you get involved um, in the network? Um, we are celebrating our 10th anniversary, and you can send us um, a postcard. Um, we've got some fantastic penguin imagery. If you were in the session early, you may have seen Kathy's um, presentation as well um, by Brian Mathers of Visual Thinkery. Um, so yeah, feel free to use um, our openly licensed imagery and also send us a postcard um, and tell us um, and send us uh, your greetings from wherever you are uh, in the world. You can get involved in GoGN if you're um, obviously a doctoral student working on open education, but we also have a wider friends and experts network as well. Thank you. Um, the wi a wider friends and experts network, which is open to anyone to join. Um, we hold regular webinars. Everyone is welcome to join those. Um, uh, they happen um, once a month. Um, so yeah, please do get involved um, and uh, find out more and uh, join in the celebrations and our activities. So thanks so much for listening and um, yeah, your time today. Thank you. And thanks so much, especially to our... I think there's a couple of minutes for questions. So oh, two minutes for questions. So if anyone has any questions, then please. Please. That's a great question, thank you. So um, some of the work that my colleague Karina has been doing with, with uh, and that Judith um, and uh, Vivian as well have been doing has been focused on better understanding um, how GoGN can um, connect with and, and support um, uh, doctoral researchers working in different areas. So the work Judith did in Africa and the work that Vivian did in Latin America and the work that Karina is doing um, as part of our, our latest phase of GoGN is all kind of building into building a better picture of how we can connect and support doctoral students in different um, regions. And part of that is kind of about, um, yeah, looking at, you know, GoGN not just being in, in, um, in the English language and how we can better do that better. So, yeah, thank you. That's kind of ongoing, ongoing work. Thanks. Perfect. So I'm not seeing any other hands. So yeah, thank you so much for coming to this session and for your attention. Thank you. And thanks to everyone online and to our fantastic speakers. Thank you.